Good morning, everybody. I'm recording this on Saturday morning. The sun's shining outside, so that's quite nice. What it's like on Sunday morning, I don't know. And uh, welcome to our service from the Brecon Presbyterian Church in the Watton for Sunday, the um, what is it, the 24th of January. We still got our candle burning for uh, Epiphany. Reminding us that the light of Christ is still shining, even though we've taken down our Christmas lights. So let's sing a little worship chorus now, taken from the Psalms. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the Lord's name is to be praised. In other words, from the time that the sun rises until late at night when the sun sets, we will praise God. Or another way of interpreting it is from the place where the sun appears to rise in the east, travels across the sky and it sets in the west. From that place to that place, God's name will be praised. The whole world, in other words. So it's saying, let's praise God in all times and all places. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the Lord's name is to be praised. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the Lord's name is to be praised. Praise ye the Lord, praise him all his servants of the Lord, praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord, from this time forth and Rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the Lord's name is to be praised. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the Lord's name is to be praised. Praise ye the Lord, praise him all his servants of the Lord, praise the name of the Lord, blessed be the name of the Lord, from this time forth and forever. Let us listen now to God's word from the New Testament, Matthew's Gospel, chapter 5, part of the Sermon on the Mount. Now, when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him and he began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, 
for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled by men. You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men, that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. Here ends the reading. Jesus telling his disciples there that they should be like salt, which has this preservative effect and makes food taste better. They should improve the world that they live in, make it a better place to be just by being in it. They should be like light that shines out and gives light to everyone. So his followers should be doing good deeds which make people want to glorify God. Not glorify the people who are doing the good deeds, but glorify God who inspired them. I'm going to read a little reflection for you now if I can find the page, here we are, um, it's from a little book, not such a little book, but Bread for Each Day, Martin de Haan. Um, these are, you know, the daily bread readings that we still have today, our daily bread. These were earlier versions of the same thing. And this was written a good number of years ago, so it's slightly old-fashioned in its approach, but it's nonetheless relevant. And he takes a verse from 1 Corinthians, from 2 Corinthians, chapter 8, verse 21. As we have it here in the King James Version, it says, Providing for things honest, not only in the sight of the Lord, but also in the sight of men. Providing for things honest. Not only in the sight of the Lord, but also in the sight of men. He writes, Many years ago, when my father was still living, it was my privilege to work with him during the summer months. Each morning we stopped to pick up the early edition of a local newspaper, which we would read at coffee break. One morning, when we got to work, my father found that by mistake he'd taken two newspapers instead of one, as the edition was extremely thin that day. He thought first of paying the man the extra price for the paper the following morning. But then, after a moment's consideration, he said, No, I'd better go back with this paper, for someone will no doubt lose out on their morning news. And also, I don't want Mr. K, who's not a Christian, to think that I'm dishonest. He got into his car, rode back to the store, returned the additional newspaper. About a week later, a robbery occurred at this same grocery. When they fig figured back the time when it could have happened, only two people had been in the store during that period, my dad 
and another man. The grocer immediately eliminated my father from consideration. He said, this man is really honest. He came all the way back here just to return a newspaper he got by mistake. It must be the other customer who is the thief. The police apprehended the culprit, who soon made a full confession. Father's honesty and Christian character had borne fruit. He'd made an impression upon the worldly storekeeper. His actions had also left an indelible mark upon my young and pliable mind. The late Dr. Will Houghton used to tell of a soldier who became a Christian through watching a believer who was also a serviceman. The thing that impressed him was the fact that though the other men of the regiment made fun of this Christian, they always left their money in his possession for safekeeping. How important to provide things honest in the sight of all men. Say, does your Christian walk square with your Christian talk? The cause of much gossip and hardship and ills is the fair-talking fellow who won't pay his bills. Well, just a few thoughts there about the way that we should be living our lives as Christians and reflecting the light of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we're going to sing this little light of mine now. And, of course, I've not got myself organised. I've got to go and get the words. I'll have to go and get the book with the words. So I shall pause the video. they stop the video at this point. This is the end of part one. Part two will start with us singing... This little light of mine.